I was formed up between those on the power line wire. Hi everyone, welcome back to Kendra Twins. I'm Aaliyah. Kendra's not really interested in doing videos anymore, but she'll be in some, like, throughout. Like, we're planning some videos to film, but that is why she's not here. But it's just me today. Today I'm going to be interviewing Kennedy. Her story is very inspiring. We'll have her just tell it, and it's probably in the title of this video anyways. She hasn't joined yet. We'll get going once she joins. <laughs> Recording in progress. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Hi. I'm Malia. <laughs> I'm Kennedy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, so I just wanted to interview you. I found you from, what's her name, Sarah? Uh, mm -hmm. On her Instagram. And was like, uh -huh. oh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, if you want, um, how old you are, and stuff like that. So my name's Kennedy, and I'm from Burley, Idaho. And I'm 17 years old, and my story is that I got into a car accident on May 22nd. Oh, wow. That was really recent. Yeah, it was. It was way recent. So, like, what happened when you were... What exactly happened when you were in the car accident? Were you driving? Were you a passenger? I, so, it started out... I had just got off work um, that day, and I was kind of upset. And so I was just a mess all day and the day before. And so then my friends came over and they wanted to cheer me up. So they're like, let's go to the base of the mountain. We have a mountain that's right down my road and it's, we call it the D because there's a D at the top of it. So we always go to the base of the mountain and watch sunsets. So we were like, let's go to the base of the D and watch sunsets. So we did and we were watching the sunset and we were having fun up there. And then they were like, oh, let's go make crates. And so we were like, okay, so we started to go to Walmart, but we were driving out of my road first, and so then to go get uh, my friend's car, and my friend had turned to me and showed me like a picture of like something that really upset me, and she didn't mean to. It was just a whole complicated situation, yeah. and it sent me into tears, and so then I started crying and I, my memory kind of cuts off a mile before the crash. So what they have kind of reviewed is that I went off the left side of the road and then off to the right and overcorrected. And so the pole's right here and my left blinker hit the right side of the pole and it flipped us sideways and we started rolling. And between the pole that we hit and the next pole, I was flung up between those. Uh, five feet apart is the next one. And so then I was hanging on by my leg. On like a wire or? Yeah, on the power line wire. How, did it shock you or anything? So for a while we didn't know, but we have pictures of like my arm and my arm is all burnt. And so the they think that's why I didn't bleed out from my main artery in my arm is because it cauterized it. They think I got flown up and then I like my right here hit the top wire, which electrocuted me and then flung me back down. And so then it tangled up my left leg, which is now missing, um, in the wire, and it broke it. So then I didn't bleed out from my femoral artery either because the wire I was hanging on pinched that one off. And so I got cauterized and then pinched off. So that's how I didn't bleed out. Oh, wow. That's, like, really yeah. lucky. Yeah, like, it was a miracle. Like, you lost a leg, but, like, you didn't bleed out or... Yeah, I stayed alive. I was conscious the whole time. And I do have, like, my left arm is not functional right now. I have a brachial plexus injury, which means you have five main nerves that run from your spine to your arm. And three of them were ripped out from the um, from the root, and then two of them were stretched. That's why I can move my hand just a little bit. And so they did a surgery to, like, redirect the nerves to give me function in my arm. So they did that surgery a few days after my accident. So I don't quite have function yet, but we've got bicep movement. So those are my injuries is my leg broke. So that's where they had to take the amputation. They started at, uh, they started the amputation off at half of my kneecap. And then they got higher because my leg just kept decaying. Oh, wow. So they just were like, oh, we're just going to have to take it off at the break. So that's what they did. Oh, wow. Did you have yeah. any, like... Uh what are they called? Like pains? I forgot. Uh, yeah, it's pains. Yes. 
Yes, that was my worst pain at first in the hospital. Like, it was absolutely horrible. I hated it. And I just, it just felt like a, my leg was so swollen. And I could, I was on so much medication that I could see at some point. And I was like, that is like, I can see it, but it was all ripped up purple, black. It was a mess. Oh. And so I, I remember a few times I could see it and it made me sad because I knew that really wasn't there. And I could feel the pain a lot. And I still do have pain. It kind of is just a tingly sensation. Just like, it's still there. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Do you remember, like, hanging from the the pole thing? Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. So my first memory is when I first woke up in the hospital and I finally got my breathing tube out, I could talk. So I was like, Dad, I just had a crazy dream. I was really high up in the air, upside down, and it was completely black. And I remember the blood was dripping off my nose. And I just remember trying not to cry because I've never been a big crier. I hate crying. So I try everything I can not to cry. And I remember I started to cry. And I was like, no, Alex Kennedy, you can't cry. Or that will be up for you. And so that was my first memory. And a few weeks went by and I had another memory where I was looking down. I was hanging up there. And I remember looking down at everyone and there was a big white tarp underneath me to catch me if I fell, and all these people around. And I just remember looking at them, like, confused why they wouldn't get me down. And then that memory, like, kind of cut off, and I switched up to when they were putting the tourniquet on me. And I remember him in my face, and he was, like, breathing, and I, like, looked him dead in the eyes, and I was like, will you please get me down? I don't, I can't hold on much longer. And I, all of this stuff I was just trying to talk to him and have him get it down because I was up there for 45 minutes to an hour. Oh wow. What was your family's reaction when they found out you were in an accident? So my mom and my older sister and my younger sister were in Logan, Utah helping my grandma do some yard work and stuff. So they found out and all my family was there. And from what I've heard, they were like, I don't know who called him. It might've been my dad, but my mom started freaking out, crying, my older sibling. My older sister and my little sister were freaking out, crying, and they got in the car and they just drove to Pocatello. So I don't know much about them, but my dad, he was actually homesick that day. And so, and the accident was only two or three miles away from my house. It's on my road. And so he was here sick in his bed. And then right after they got me out of the power line, um, my dad got contacted because our family is live 360 and my grandpa's on it and luckily he's been a little stalker but um, he w I always answer my phone like no matter what I, I always answer my phone and so he was like Jared like Kennedy's stuck in the like she's been in the same spot in the field for a long time and he was like oh it's like I don't know and so then my grandpa called me I didn't answer my dad called me I didn't answer so they started to freak out and then my dad finally got to the scene after they got me out, luckily, because that would be horrible as a parent to be able to, to see that. Yeah. And then he was freaking out, and he ran out to the car in the field and was, like, hysterical. And they were like, Jared, she's over here. And he started praying and outside the ambulance because they wouldn't let him end at that point. And he was just praying, please, please, please don't take her. And um, I just really worried like a normal parent would be. And then they finally was like, Jared, do you want to give her a blessing? And he said yes. So he got in the ambulance and he gave me a blessing. And he said, I don't remember what I said, but I remember kissing you on the forehead saying my goodbye if I needed to. And drove, And then he got thrown in the truck with my grandpa to go to Pocatello. And he just remembers the blood on his lips and like just how sad it was because he didn't know if he was going to see me a lot again or not. Yeah. That, that so, would be so hard. Oh, yeah. A horrible experience. Oh, and then my brother. I forget sometimes, but he is on a mission. So I forget. I don't know his reaction. I just know that he got told. And he had a really hard time with it for a while. And they were like, and his companions were like, Carter, like, you got a freebie to go home. And he's like, I'm not going home. He goes, I'm going to work harder and bring my sister the most blessings I possibly can. And so the next day he like got, he gave away like tons of Book of Mormons and he's just been working very hard on his mission since then. So we definitely have been able to tell the blessings he's brought in. Oh wow. How are your friends that were in the accident? Were, 
what were their injuries? And... Um, they're doing really good. So Jacob, he had a broken pelvis and neck. I think that's it. And he's doing really good. He's still in therapy, trying to get it, be able to run again. Nikaya, she had a broken back, neck, pelvis, and then I think she had a rib out. And I think that might be it for that one too. But she's been doing really good. She's still in, we're all still in therapy. But yeah, the recovery's been really well. So were you guys not wearing seatbelts? Is that why you were thrown? No, we, we were not. So always wear your seatbelt, people. <laughs> always wear your seatbelt. Even if you're really close to your home. <laughs> uh, yeah, everyone's always like, the worst accidents accidents are close to home. And I was like, uh -huh. not, <laughs> yep, <laughs> it definitely was. How has your recovery been like? Do you have to do physical therapy? Yeah, so I have physical therapy three times a week. And so I go, cause I only have school Mondays and Wednesdays because I fit all my schedule into A days. So then on, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, I have physical therapy. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have occupational therapy for my arm because he's a hand specialist. So we've been working on exercises for my arm to help strengthen it and do little things. So I have quite a bit of therapy. And then we started um, this like magnetic shock therapy to help stimulate growth and heal. And so we started doing that on my arm and my spine and all this stuff. And we've been doing it for I think a month and a half maybe now, and it's it's done a lot. So we're kind of just doing everything that we think will help my arm come back because that's our biggest worry right now. Yeah. Do you have a prosthetic? I do. Huh? Yeah, I love it. I went to go get fitted for it. I was so excited because I just was like, let me just take it home now. <laughs> but they wouldn't let me because obviously it wasn't my real leg. But they got it done super fast, so I got it in like a week after that. And since then, they were like, you're gonna have to slowly ease into it. Like, you'll have, your skin has to get used to it. It'll be hard. And I was kind of like, no, nah. like, I can do it. I'm gonna go all day, every day. And at first, it like kind of kicked me in the butt when I got it, because I got a few blisters. And then we found out that they were putting, like, Shriners had put this sleeve on how they normally would put it on. But with me, my skin was still brand new. And so we figured out how to, like, put it not on the brand new skin so it wouldn't blister. So, and then we put a bandit over it. So since then, my leg's a little sore and stuff every once in a while, but I've been able to wear it all day, every day within a week of getting it. Oh, wow. And I've had it for about a month. So I've been loving it. So can you walk pretty well with it? Mm -hmm. I'm walking with assistance right now. So like a hand crutch or a, a regular crutch. And I normally use that when I'm in town or at school because just in case someone like knocks me over, it's more stability. But at home, I don't use it. At therapy, I don't use it. So I'm getting there to be able to not to use any assistance. So it's been pretty, it's been pretty amazing for how fast I've been able to learn it. Oh wow! Um, I have one leg, and we, mm -hmm. so me and my sister, we've never really done uh, prosthetic because I don't know, it's just really uncomfortable for us. Where yeah. all the way at the hip so yeah like, I can't imagine yeah that would be and it would be hard to keep it on and like everything it like squeezes our hips <laughs> but the yeah. number one we question did. we get is do we have prosthetics but yeah so do you have what leg do you not have is it your left one or your right one so I have my left leg and I don't have the right leg okay and then my sister has the right leg <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. That'd be hard. Yeah. Be really hard. <laughs> What's been the hardest thing to relearn or do differently? I would probably say getting dressed. With my arm not being able to function, it's hard to like thread it through my clothes and make sure it's in a sling everywhere. And then getting dressed, my, like dressing my prosthetic with one arm is so hard. Like getting jeans on, uh, <laughs> I could not do it. I'm like, Dad, can you do it? Um, that's been pretty hard putting shoes on and off because obviously I love shoes. So I'm always like, ooh, I want this pair today and this pair. So I don't, I have been trying to get better at just keeping the same shoe on if I can. But yeah, definitely getting dressed and ready. Did they but, make your foot, the foot on it the same size as your mm -hmm. foot? That's good. Yeah, they measured it and everything. That's, That's pretty cool. How was it emotionally after? Were you like, was it hard to get used to like emotionally? Um, yeah, so. 
from the beginning, I've been emotionally really good, and I don't know why. That's like the biggest question everyone has. It's like, why are you doing so good, or how are you doing so good? And obviously, I have had a few bad days, and like a, the week before, I think I had a really hard week. I just had a lot of negative thoughts, and like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. This is hard. Why do I have to think about before I get out of bed to get my leg on or get in a wheelchair? Why can't I just wish I could get up and out. And so I just wish, in a way, sometimes I could have it a little different. But for the most part, my emotional side has been really good. I've been doing really good. That's good. Have you had, like, PTSD or anything like that? I have PTSD to smells, sounds, and, like, certain things. This is a funny story. So in the hospital, they gave me this aloe vera body wash. And it's like not a nice brand. It's not like Bath and Body Works or anything. It's like hospital stuff. And so they used it every time they bathed me. And we had an extra bottle when we came home. So my little sister took it and bathed my older sister's little dog. And it's an inside dog. And it was running around and it jumped on me. And I was like, get it off me because the smell just brought back so many bad memories. Um, hand sanitizer, certain hand sanitizer, like if it's the ones they've used, that gives me major PTSD or loud sounds. Or it sounds like cost like sounds that would be in a hospital or helicopters. Those give me major PTSD or ambulance sounds. Like certain sounds like that are hard. Yeah. What hospital were you at? Oh, so that night of the accident, they flew me. So they stabilized me in the ambulance because they didn't think I was going to be able to fly anywhere. And then they said, well, we'll try to fly her to Portneuf and Pocatello. And so they were like, we don't know if she's going to live or not. So... We'll see. We'll try to stabilize her. So they got me there because we wanted to go to U, the U, and we couldn't make it there. And so they stabilized me there over the night. And that Sunday, we flew up to the University of Utah. So then I was there for a few weeks, and then I got transferred to Primary Children's for my rehab. Um, how has your family adjusted? They've adjusted pretty well. My little sister, she's 10, and she has helped me with everything. Like, if I need help, she's there to help me. My dad and my mom have helped me with everything. It's hard, definitely, because I just got cleared to drive this week. And so I haven't been able to drive this whole time since I've been home. So trying to get me to places I need to be, school, therapy, like if I'm going out with friends, like it's been hard to adjust to that. But we figured it out. It took a while to get there, but we've got it. <laughs> That's good. So I saw you went to Disneyland. I wanted to ask you this. So I hate roller coasters, and my aunt was like, I think it's because you can't brace yourself. Mm -hmm. D does it feel weird going on something like that after to you? No. Really? It was pretty normal. I felt pretty good about it. The only one that scared me to death was Splash Mountain. If you follow my Instagram, you've probably seen that picture. Um, <laughs> that one scared me because it just goes straight down and there's like no belt strap, nothing. And so oh. my left arm doesn't work, so I'm just going out the right side. So I'm you're like, like, oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> so did someone have to hold on to you? Um, the first time my mom had her fingers in my belt loops, and I was like, that's not good. And then they <laughs> wanted to go again, and I was like, no, no, no. But I went. I was like, Dad, if I'm going, you're holding on to me. So he had his arms wrapped around me the second time. <laughs> but all the other roller coasters, I had a lot of fun on. That's good. Does anyone treat you differently from what happened or anything like that? Um, so, for the most part, people obviously are used to the old Kennedy, which was fully functional. So, they were obviously cautious at first, didn't know what to say, a little bit scared. But once they realized that I was still mentally all there and hadn't changed as a person, they were like, oh yeah, like I do know you. And like, they didn't say that, but they kind of acted a lot more normal. But for the most part, yeah, I still do get looks. And little kids are my favorite. I've got, oh my gosh, he's a transformer. You've got a robot leg. Little kids are my favorite with it. The, because they're just straight up honest. <laughs> Has your friends ever made jokes about, like, you missing a limb or anything? Because my friends make jokes about it all the time. <laughs> um, my friends are really cautious about it because they don't want to hurt my feelings. Yeah. But I'm the one that makes all the jokes. I make I make funny jokes and then some jokes I probably take too far that make people uncomfortable <laughs> but I'm the one that makes most of the jokes <laughs> yeah my friends are like they'll make jokes more out in public and people are like what you're so mean <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, yeah we don't mind I think that's it where can we follow you just my kitty Kenny account okay 
thank you for letting me talk to you. Um, yeah, of course. It's good getting to hear your story. It was nice meeting you. Yeah, you too. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Um, go check out Kennedy's Instagram. I will put it down below. Um, yeah, bye.